So let's say that y is a fraction. So y is equal to u over v. So it's one function divided by another function. So for example, let's say that y is equal to x squared plus 5 over x minus 3. We can differentiate this using the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is that if y is equal to u over v, then dy over dx is equal to v multiplied by du over dx minus u multiplied by dv over dx. And all of this is divided by v squared. So let's show how this works with an example. Let's use this example here. So this is of the form y is equal to u over v here, with u being equal to the numerator, which is the x squared plus 5, and v being equal to the denominator, which is the x minus 3 here. Now we talked about in the product rule video what this du over dx and dv over dx means here. When we do du, over dx, this means that we're differentiating u and we're doing it in terms of x. So we're differentiating this here in terms of x. So if we differentiate x squared plus 5, this x squared is just going to become 2x like this. And then this constant is just going to disappear here. So du over dx is equal to 2x. And then as v is equal to x minus 3, dv over dx is going to be equal to, so if we differentiate this x here, it's just going to be 1, and then this constant is just going to be 0 here. So we've got du over dx and dv over dx, so therefore dy over dx is going to be equal to, and then we're just going to sub in the values here. So it's going to be v, which is x minus 3, multiplied by du over dx, which is the 2x that we figured out, and this is minus u, which is x squared plus 5 here and then this is multiplied by dv over dx which is the 1 here and all of this is divided by v squared which is going to be x minus 3 squared like this here. So we can simplify this to this here as x squared plus 5 times 1 is just x squared uh, minus x squared minus 5 like this here and then if you expand all the brackets and put it into quadratics you'll get that dy over dx is equal to this here. Now, note that for the quotient rule, because we have this minus symbol here, the order of the terms here matter, where for the product rule, we talked about this in the product rule video, it doesn't actually matter which function you call u and which function you call v. They're interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one you call which. However, for the quotient rule, because we have this minus symbol and because the order of the terms here are important, this is really important. We have to call u the numerator of the fraction, so in this case, the x squared plus 5, and we have to call v the denominator of the fraction, so this x minus 3 here, that's really, really important. Now, just another note, the quotient rule is given to you in the formula booklet, but it's not written in this format here. It's written in the function format instead, where they basically say that if y is equal to f of x over g of x, then the derivative is f dash of x g of x minus f of x g dash of x over gx squared. This is the exact same thing as this here, but we've written it in the dy over dx format, where the formula booklet gives it in the function format. So you have access to the quotient rule in the exam in the formula booklet, but it's in the function form here. So here's a few examples of when you need to differentiate using the quotient rule. I've given you the quotient rule in the function format, like it's given to you in the formula booklet, like you have access to in the exam. I personally prefer the kind of U and V version of using the quotient rule, but obviously you can get that from just looking at this here by just replacing the F of X with uh, U and the G of X with V. OK, so here's the first one, that y is equal to sin of x over the natural log of x. So therefore, remember, u is the numerator. So u is going to be sin x. And therefore, du over dx is going to be this differentiator, then sin x differentiator we've talked about before. It's just going to be cos x. And therefore, the denominator is going to be v. So v is going to be the natural log of x. Therefore, dv over dx is going to be the natural log of x differentiated, which we've talked about before again, is 1 
over x like this. So therefore dy over dx is going to be v multiplied by du over dx. So it's going to be the natural log of x multiplied by cos of x. And then remember the minus symbol and then it's going to be minus u multiplied by dv over dx. So it's going to be sin x over x. And all of this is over v squared. So it's going to be the natural log of x squared. Now you can leave it like this uh, if you want to, um, but it's a bit cleaner if you don't have this kind of fraction inside another fraction. So you can multiply every single term here by x. So you get this here and therefore you don't have this fraction inside a fraction as an x in front of the terms here instead. So dy over dx is equal to this. So for the second one the numerator is the natural log of x that's what u is and then if we differentiate this to du over dx this is just like before going to be 1 over x and then v is equal to the denominator which is the 2x plus 3 to the power of 3 so dv over dx is equal to so to differentiate this we need to use the chain rule because it's a function in another function if you need a reminder of how the chain rule works we've already covered it in this chapter in the chain rule video but we need to do the inner function differentiated multiplied by the outer function differentiated so the inner function is this 2x plus 3 so if we differentiate the 2x plus 3 this 3 will just go away and this 2x will become 2 so the inner function differentiated is just 2 and this is multiplied by the outer outer function differentiated which is just power of 3 here and then when you differentiate something that's to the power of 3 this 3 is going to come down like this and then we just keep the inner function like this again go back to the chain rule video if you need a reminder of how this works and then the power of 3 is now going to become a power of 2 like this here and then 2 times 3 is just 6 so dv over dx is 6 2x plus 3 to the power of 2 so therefore dy over dx is going to be v multiplied by du over dx which is going to be 2x plus 3 to the power of 3 over x and then remember it's going to be minus and then u multiplied by dv over dx so this is going to be minus 6 natural log of x 2x plus 3 to the power of 2 and all of this is over v squared or if you're using the function form the gx squared so it's going to be 2x plus 3 to the power of 6 so again you can leave it in this format if you want to but um, if you, it asks you to simplify it or if you want to simplify it Firstly, as we talked about before, it's quite messy to leave like a fraction in a fraction. So we just multiply everything, all of the terms here, by uh, x, the denominator. So therefore, this will go away and just become 2x plus 3 to the power of 3. And then we'll have an x here and an x here like this. And we can also do some simplifying because we have 2x plus 3 in all of the terms. So we can divide every single term by 2x plus 3 to the power of 2. So this whole thing here will go away. This here will now be to the power of 1, and this here will now be to the power of 4. So then dy for dx is going to just be equal to this here. And then for the third one, the numerator is 2 cos squared of x. So therefore u is going to be equal to 2 cos squared of x. So therefore du over dx is going to be equal to so this 2 is going to remain the same so we just bring this 2 down here and then we need to differentiate cos squared of x so we need to use the chain rule again it might be a bit easier to see this if we write it like this here with the cos x to the power of 2 like this is the same thing but it's a bit easier to understand if you write it like this so the inner function is going to be this cos x and the outer function is going to be this power of 2 here so cos x the inner function differentiated is going to be minus sin x and then this is multiplied by the outer function differentiated so this is going to be this power of 2 here and when you have something to the power of 2 when you differentiate it the 2 is going to come down like this this cos x is still going to be here and then it's going to be to the power of 1 now but we don't write the power of 1 we just write it like this here and then we've got this 2 and then this minus and then this multiplied by 2 here so this is going to be minus 4 sin x cos of x so this is du over dx and then v the denominator is e to the power of 4x so therefore dv over dx is equal to, we've talked about this before, if you have e to the power of something x when you differentiate it, this number is going to come down, so it's going to be 4e 
to the power of 4x like this here. So therefore dy over dx is going to be v multiplied by du over dx. So it's going to be minus 4e to the power of 4x sin x cos of x. And then this is going to be minus and then u multiplied by dv over dx. So this is going to be 8 and then e to the power of 4x and then cos squared of x. And all of this is over v squared. So it's going to be e uh, to the power of 4x squared, which is going to be e to the power of 8x. Now we can do some simplifying here because we have e to the power of something x in all of the terms and what we can do we can cancel everything down by e to the power of 4x. So this here will go away, this here will go away and then e to the power of 8x will become e to the power of 4x instead. So we can write dy over dx as minus 4 cx cos of x minus 8 cos squared of x over e to the power of 4x. Now, I've talked about this in all of the videos in this chapter so far. For a more detailed explanation on this, go back to the first video in this chapter titled Differentiating Sin, Cos, Exponentials and Logarithms. But I want to mention it quickly here too because I think it's useful. There's a really good way to check your answers, in my opinion, to differentiation questions in an exam by using your calculator. So let's show how this works by using this example here that we just went through this question. So on your calculator, if you press shift and then this integration symbol here, you get this differentiation term and if you put in the y value that the question wants you to differentiate so in this case it's this expression here so put this expression into your calculator you can get the x terms by using this x button here and then for the x is equal part if you put in a random value for it so let's just say x is equal to 5 and then if you press equals on your calculator your calculator gives out a value of 9.1583 times 10 to the power of minus 10. What this value is, is your calculator differentiating this expression here and then in the resulting derivative, subbing in the value of x is equal to 5 and getting out this value. So why does this matter? Because what we can do is we can sub in the same value for x, so x is equal to 5 in this instance, into the derivative that we figured out using algebra and using the quotient rule. So that's what I've done down here. I've done the derivative that we figured out, but I've subbed in x for 5. And if you put this into your calculator, remember to use radians, as when we differentiate, we always use radians, not degrees. It also gives out the value of 9.1583 times 10 to the power of minus 10. So here, we got the this value by your calculator differentiating this expression and subbing in the value of x is equal to 5 and this value we've got by using the derivative that we figured out ourselves previously using algebra and using the quotient rule and subbing in the same value of x is equal to 5 and as these two values are the same they're both the same value this tells you that this derivative here is correct, that we've done all the working out correctly, and this is the correct answer. And this is useful because therefore you know that you can move on to the next question knowing that all of the working out you've done is correct. Now, you can't just use this in order to solve the question. One, because it doesn't work like that. It doesn't give out this algebraic expression here. And two, you wouldn't be able to do that because in an exam you haven't done any work, you haven't shown any work. You need to show your working out. But what this method is really useful for is after you've done the question and after you have figured out that um, you think you've got this as the answer, use this method and if these two values are the same, you know that you've done all your working out correctly and you've got the correct answer. I just want to make one final note on the quotient rule. There is an argument to be made that for a lot of cases of where we need to differentiate a fraction, we don't actually really need to use the quotient rule. So for this example here that we've already been through, so we showed how to do it using the quotient rule, but what you could actually do is rewrite this here. Because of the indices law, we can actually rewrite the denominator e to the power of 4x. We can actually rewrite it as e to the power of minus 4x like this. And this here, we can differentiate using the product rule because it's two things multiplied together. Again, go back to the product rule video if you need a reminder of how we use the product rule and where we use it. But we can differentiate this using the product rule. We call one of these u and one of these 
v so if we call this u here if we differentiate this we've actually already differentiated this using the quotient rule it's kind of the same working out du over dx would be minus 4 sin of x cos of x and then if we call v e to the power of minus 4x dv over dx is going to be minus 4e to the power of minus 4x where we bring this minus 4 down here like this so therefore dy over dx the product rule um, if you remember is going to be u multiplied by dv over dx which is this here and then it's going to be plus v multiplied by du over dx which is going to be this here and then what we can do is if you wanted to you could factorize out this e to the minus 4x like this here and rewrite e to the minus 4x as the denominator here e to the power of 4x and hopefully you can see that this is the exact same thing as this here it's just these two are um, swapped around in um, this case so these two are the exact same these two are the same answer it's just two different ways of figuring it out this one before we figured out using the quotient rule and this here we figured out using the product rule so it's your preference in terms of what one you want to use I would advise that for more complicated examples where the denominator is something more complicated than this I would stick with the quotient rule remember the quotient rule is given to you in the formula booklet so you don't have to remember it um, but in a lot of cases if you don't like the quotient rule you can just use the product rule. So now we'll just go through some exam questions where you can use the quotient rule. I've given you the function form of the quotient rule here because it'll be given to you in the formula booklet. So you'll have access to it in an exam. So for part A, we need to show that, so we have y here, and we need to show that dy over dx is equal to this, and we need to find a and n. Okay, so we need to differentiate this, and this is a fraction, so therefore we can use the quotient rule. So the numerator is this, so therefore u is going to be equal to 5x squared plus 10x, so therefore du over dx is going to be equal to, so 5x squared differentiated is going to be 10x, and then 10x differentiated is just going to be 10 and then the denominator v is x plus 1 squared so therefore dv over dx is equal to so we need to use the chain rule the inner function is this x plus 1 and when you differentiate x plus 1 it's just 1 so we can write 1 times we don't really need to write it and then the outer function differentiated is this power of 2 here and when you differentiate remember something to the power of 2 this 2 is going to come to the front like this and then this is still going to be x plus 1 and now this is going to be to the power of 1 but we don't need to write this so therefore dy over dx is going to be equal to v multiplied by du over dx so this is going to be x plus 1 squared and then 10 uh, multiplied by 10x plus 10 and this is going to be minus u multiplied by dv over dx so this is going to be 2 and then um, 5x squared plus 10x multiplied by the x plus 1 and all of this is over v squared so it's going to be x plus 1 to the power power of 4 okay so we need to write dy over dx in this form here where a is a constant and this at the moment is an algebraic expression it's not a constant so we're going to need to do some simplifying and some cancelling down in order to find what a is okay well the first bit of simplifying and cancelling out we can do is that we have an x plus 1 bracket in all of the terms so we can cancel out the like terms so you can get rid of the x plus 1 here and we can get rid of 1 of the x plus 1 brackets here we can get rid of one of the x plus 1 brackets here so instead of x plus 1 to the power of 4 it's now going to be x plus 1 to the power of 3 so we can write this like this now here instead and now we can expand the brackets so this x plus 1 times 10x plus 10 is going to be so x multiplied by 10x is going to be 10x squared and then 10 multiplied by x is going to be 10x and then 10x multiplied by 1 is going to be 10x and 1 multiplied by 10 is going to be 10 like that and then we have got the minus 2 and then we're going to expand this bracket here so it's minus 10x squared minus 20x and all of this is still over x plus 1 to the power of 3 okay we can do some cancelling out here this 10x squared is going to cancel out with this minus 10x squared and these two 10x's are going to cancel out with this minus 20x such as that we're just left with 10 as the numerator so we can write this in the form 10 over x plus 1 to the power of 3 so 10 is the a and the n is the 3 
And then for part B, we need to find the range of values for x for which dy over dx is less than zero. And as we figured out in part A, that dy over dx can be written like this. This question is basically asking, find the range of values such that 10 over x plus one to the power of three is less than zero. Well, we can divide both sides by 10, such that it becomes one over x plus one to the power of three is less than zero. Now, when we think about a question like this, we think about trying to rearrange the inequality in order to make x the subject. And this kind of doesn't really work here because the next logical step is to try and bring the one numerator onto this side but the issue if you do that is you're then going to be doing one divided by zero which you can't do you can't divide things by zero the best way to think about this is that what we're looking for is we want this to be less than zero so we want this to be negative and the only possible way this can be negative is if this here is negative because this is positive one so the only way that one divided by something can be a negative number is if the thing that you're dividing by is a negative number so therefore this x plus one to the power of three has to be negative and therefore it has to be less than zero and then this is an easy thing to rearrange in order to find um, in order to rearrange in terms of x because what you can do is you can take the cube root of both sides so therefore it's going to be x plus one is less than zero like this here and then you can just move this one onto the other side so that x is less than minus one and then this is the range of values for which dy over dx is less than zero when x is less than minus one so here's another example of an exam question where we're given this fraction here and we need to show that dy over dx can be written in this form here where we have a which is a constant that we need to find okay so we have this x this root x here in order to make this a bit more friendlier to differentiate it's better to write this root x in the indices form of x to the power of a half like i've done here because it's just easier to differentiate we can differentiate this using the quotient rule so u is equal to x minus 4, so that's the numerator, so therefore du of dx is going to be equal to, so if you differentiate x it's going to be 1, if you differentiate minus 4 it's just going to go away, so du over dx is 1, and therefore v, the denominator, is 2 plus x to the power of a half, so therefore dv over dx is going to be equal to two so two differentiated will just go away and then x to the power of a half differentiated is going to be so this half is going to come down here become the coefficient and then it's going to be x to the power of a half minus one which is going to be minus a half like this here so therefore dy over dx is going to be v multiplied by du over dx which is just going to be two plus x to the power of a half minus remember the minus u multiplied by dv over dx which is going to be minus a half x to the power of minus a half multiplied by the x minus 4 and all of this is over v squared which is going to be this 2 plus x to the power of a half um, squared okay so we need to show that this can be written in this form here so let's do some simplifying and some expanding so this here is just going to remain the same and then we can do um, we can expand this bracket here so it's going to be minus a half x to the power of minus a half times x which would become minus a half x to the power of a half and then this here will be multiplied by minus four so it becomes plus two x to the power of minus a half and then we're going to expand this bracket here remember when you have a bracket like this it's two of these brackets multiplied together so two times two is going to be four and then it's going to be two multiplied by x to the power of a half, which is going to be two x to the power of a half. Remember, there's going to be two of them. So it's going to be four x to the power of a half. If you want to do the long way of expanding it by writing two of these brackets out, that's fine. Then x to the power of a half times x to the power of a half is going to be x, like this here. So at the moment, we have this fraction here, and we have this x to the power of a half minus half x to the power of a half, which we can simplify to half x to the power of a half, like this. And with this fraction, I'm just going to multiply everything in this fraction by 2, like this here. So this half goes away and we're not left with this kind of fraction within a fraction that can be a bit awkward and um, a bit difficult to look at. So if we do that, we're left with this fraction up here. And this is a pretty complicated fraction and algebraic expression. There's a lot going on here. You have these kind of horrible half indices. And it can be quite difficult from here to know what to do next in order to get to the answer. And my advice with something like this, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're kind of stuck and you don't know where to go next, always look because this is a show that question 
always look at where you're going. So what is the final answer that you're meant to be getting to? And we're meant to be getting to this 1 over a root x here. And another way to write this is 1 over a x to the power of a half. So in our final answer, we want this a x to the power of a half in the denominator. And specifically, we want this x to the power of a half in the denominator. And because we want that in our final answer, what's a good idea to do at this point is in the denominator to factorise out this x to the power of a half, because that is the thing that we want in our final answer. That's the thing that we need. And if we factorise out that, the stuff that's left over could possibly be cancelled out or it could go away in some way. So let's do that. And this is what we've done here. And hopefully you can see how we've gone from this to this here. The 8, if you factorise out x to the power of a half, will now be 8x to the power of minus a half. And then 8x to the power of a half, this will just go away. And then 2x, if you factorise out x to the power of a half, will be 2x to the power of a half, like this here. And with the numerator, I've just slightly rearranged the order of the terms. They're the same terms, I've just rearranged the order of them. And hopefully you can see with this here and this here, these two are the exact same thing now, except this one is two times bigger than this one. So if we factorise out two from this here, like we've done here, these two are now the exact same. And the benefit of this is, you can think about it if you just want to put brackets around it like this, we can cancel out these two. We can cancel out these two, and as a result, we're left with just the 1 over 2x to the power of a half, which we can write as 1 over 2 root x, which is the final answer with a being 2. So we've got to the final answer. I think this is really good advice. I kind of realise the further I get into maths is a really good skill to build is not to kind of get tunnel vision with what you're doing and just kind of endlessly working on this fraction here. Take a step back and look at all the information that's available to you and look at what you're trying to get to and see if you can get any information from this. And the information that we got is that we need x to the power of a half in the denominator. So we factorised out the x to the power of a half and we were left with this, which cancelled out. So here's a couple more past exam questions related to the quotient rule for you to have a go at. I've given you the quotient rule in the function form as you'll be given it in the formula booklet in an exam. So have a go at these questions and I'll go through the answers in about five seconds. So for question one, part B, I didn't include part A from the original exam question because it wasn't relevant to the quotient rule. But for part B, we need to show that dy over dx is equal to this from this y value. And as this is a fraction, we need to use the quotient rule. We should use the quotient rule. So the numerator, u, is 3x squared plus 6x minus 7. So therefore, du over dx is equal to... So if you differentiate 3x squared, it's going to be 6 x and if you differentiate 6x it's going to be 6 and if you differentiate 7 it just goes away and then the denominator is v which is the x plus 1 squared part so therefore dv over dx is equal to so we need to use the chain rule the inner function is this x plus 1 and if you differentiate this the x will just become 1 so it'll just be 1 multiplied by for the inner function we don't need to write this and then the outer function differentiated is this power of 2 here and anything to the power of 2 is going to be so 2 is going to become the new um, coefficient and then it's going to be x plus 1 to the power of 1 like this, which you don't need to write the power of 1. So therefore, dy over dx is going to be equal to v multiplied by du over dx, which is going to be this here, minus u multiplied by dv over dx, which is going to be this here, and all of this is over v squared, which is going to be x plus 1 to the power of 4. And as x plus 1 is common in all of the terms, we can do some simplifying and cancelling down, whereas this x plus 1 here is going to go, one of these x plus 1s here is going to go, and this power of 4 is now going to become the power of 3. So we can simplify it to this here. And then from here, we've already got the denominator as the x plus 1 to the power of 3. We just need to show that this up here can be simplified to 20. So if we expand the brackets, so x plus 1 times 6x plus 6 is going to be, so 6x multiplied by x is 6x squared, and then it's going to be plus 
6x plus 6x and then the 6 times 1 is going to be plus 6 like this and then minus 2 times 3x squared is going to be minus 6x squared minus 2 times 6x is going to be minus 12x and minus 2 times minus 7 is going to be 14 and then we can do some simplifying here this 6x squared is going to cancel out with a minus 6x squared these two 6x squareds are going to cancel out with a minus 12x and the 6 and the 14 are going to add together to give 20 which is what's required and then for part C, first thing we need to find d squared y over dx squared. So we need to differentiate this again. Now you could use the quotient rule because this is a fraction, but like I've talked about before, the easier way to do this is just to write it in this form instead. And then you could just use the chain rule, which is a lot quicker and easier in my opinion. So we could differentiate this using the chain rule, so therefore d squared y over dx squared is equal to, so this 20, is still going to be here and this is going to be multiplied by the inner function differentiated so the x plus 1 differentiated which we've talked about already is just 1 so we don't really need to write it and then the outer function differentiated which is this minus 3 power and then if you differentiate anything to the power of minus 3 this minus 3 is going to come down as the coefficient and then this x plus 1 is still going to be here and then it's going to be to the power of minus 3 minus 1 so it's going to be to the power of minus 4. And then 20 times minus 3 is minus 60. And then we can rewrite this indices here as the denominator like this. So d squared y over dx squared is equal to minus 60 over x plus 1 to the power of 4. And then we also need to find the real values of x for which d squared y over dx squared is equal to minus 15 over 4. So therefore we're going to equal this here to minus 15 over 4. We can get rid of the minuses on both sides here so it's just left with this and then we can bring this 60 numerator onto the other side so it's going to become x plus 1 to the power of 4 is equal to 60 divided by 15 over 4 you can think about the 60 as being like the numerator in terms of it's um being divided by the 15 over 4 and then this here is just 16 and then we can take the fourth root of both sides so we've got x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 2 the fourth root of 16 is 2 but remember for even powers it could be positive or negative because minus 2 to the power of 4 is also equal to 16. So therefore there are two uh, values of x. The first one is when x plus 1 is equal to 2. So that means that x is equal to 1. And the second one is when x plus 1 is equal to minus 2. So x is equal to minus 3. So x can be equal to 1 and minus 3. There are two values. So question 2 is a modelling question. And it's about a population of mice, which is given by n. And we have t, which is the number of months after the start of the study. And it's given by this equation here. For part a, we need to find the number of mice in the population at the start of the study. And when it says at the start, this is always an indication that this is when t is equal to 0. This is 0 months after the start of the study. This is the start of the study. So t is equal to 0. So all you just do is plug 0 as t into this equation like I've done here and it gives out a value of 90. So there were 90 mice at the start of the study. So for part b we need to show that the rate of growth dn over dt can be written in this format here and dn over dt is this question's version of dy over dx is the n variable is like the y variable and the t here is like the x variable so we basically need to differentiate this to find dy over dx so we need to differentiate this here and as it's a fraction we can use the quotient rule so in order to differentiate this using the quotient rule we're going to say that u is equal to 900 and then du over, it's going to be dt in this case because t is the x variable, though it's not the end of the world if you accidentally write x. And then if you differentiate this 900, it's just a constant, so this is going to be 0. And then v is going to be equal to the denominator here, which is the 3 plus 7e to the power of minus 0.25t. So dv 
over dt is equal to, so if we differentiate this here, this 3 just goes away, so it's a constant, and then if we differentiate this here, so this 7 comes down, so it's going to be 7 multiplied by, and then if you differentiate e to the power of minus 0.25t, this minus 0.25t is going to come down as the coefficient, so it's going to be minus 0.25, and then e to the power of minus 0. 25t like this here and then 7 multiplied by minus 0 0.25 is minus 7 over 4 and then it's e to the power of minus 0 0.25t so that's dv over dt so therefore dn over dt is we use the quotient rule so it's v multiplied by du over dt but as du over dt is equal to 0 therefore this is going to cancel out this v multiplied by du over dt so we're just going to be left with minus u multiplied by dv over dt. So this is going to be minus 900 and then minus 7 over 4 e to the power of minus 0.25t. And this is going to be over v squared, which is going to be 3 plus 7e to the power of minus 0.25t squared. And then we can slightly simplify this because this minus will cancel out with this minus here. So we're left with dn over dt is equal to this here. So we have an equation for dn over dt, which is what we need. But the problem is, is that we have it written in terms of t, where the question has it written in terms of n, where n is kind of the y variable in this question here. So I have to be honest, I think this is a pretty tricky question. And the way that I'm going to go through it is the way that I originally figured out the answer to this question, um, and the way that I did it, which worked best for me and is the best way for me to understand it. But everyone does maths differently, and the way that I do it, it might not be the best way for you. So if you really struggle with this question and don't particularly like the way that I did it, I would employ you to look at the mark scheme for this question. I'll try and remember to put it in the description of this video. If I don't, literally just search up Edexcel A-level maths and then this paper here. They go through, they do a couple of other different ways that are very similar to this way. Um, the only difference is that the kind of substitutions and kind of the cancelling out that they do is a tiny bit different and maybe you'd prefer those ways if you want to look at those. But the way that I'm going to do it is, so what we need to do is we basically need to do two things. We need to get rid of this e to the power of minus 0.25t here. And we need to get rid of this e to the power of minus 0.25t here as well. So we need to get rid of these two things. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to use the equation that links t and n, which is the original equation up here. So I've written it out over here. I've just swapped um, around the sides so like this here. And what we can do is we can rearrange this in order to get substitutions that we can put into this question here. So let me show you what I mean. So at the moment, it's 900 over 3 plus 7e to the power of minus 0.25t is equal to n. And then if we move this 900 numerator onto the other side, we get this here. And this here is key. And the reason that this is key here is because we have this in terms of 3 plus 7e to the power of minus 0.25t. And this is actually the denominator here. It's part of the denominator. So therefore, we can make this substitution for 3 plus 7e to the power of minus 0.25t for 900 over n. So that's what I've done here. I've subbed out this 3 plus 7e to the power of minus 0.25t for 900 over n, and we've still got this power of 2 here. So we've basically done one part. We've got rid of this part down here. Now we just need to get rid of this part up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 3 here onto the other side. So it becomes 7e to the power of minus 0.25t is equal to 900 over n minus 3. And we need to get it in terms of 7 over 4e to the power of minus 0.25t. And at the moment, we have it in terms of 7e to the power of minus 0.25t. So the best thing to do with this is to multiply this whole thing by a quarter, so therefore we get this here, and now this here is in terms of 7 over 4 e to the power of minus 0.25t, and this is equal to a quarter multiplied by this 900 um, over n minus 3 here. And now we can make this substitution here for this 7 over 4 e to the power of minus 0.25t in the numerator here, so that's what I've done here. We've replaced it with this quarter 900 over n minus 3 like this here, and we've got rid of all the t's and we've got it written in terms of n now.
So all we just need to do now is simplify this down into this format here. So if we do this 900 multiplied by a quarter here, we get 225. And then also if we expand this bracket here and do the squared part here, it's going to be 900 squared, which is going to be 810,000. And this is going to be over n squared, like this here. Now we have this fraction inside another fraction, which is a bit messy and difficult to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply all the terms by n squared squared so we get rid of this denominator here so that's what I've done down here and now we've got an n squared here so it's 225 n squared like this here and then if you do this 225 divided by this 810,000 you actually find that it um, divides really neatly because 810,000 is actually a factor of 225 so this will actually cancel out completely and be 1 and this will be cancelled down to 3,600 like this here so when we look at this here and what we want as the final answer, we want we want an n factorized out like this. We've got an n squared at the moment. So let's move one of these n's into this bracket here. So this will cancel out this denominator here to just leave us with 900. And now it will be minus 3n instead of minus 3 like this here. And then what we can do, we have uh, a multiple of 3 common in all of the terms here. So we can divide everything by 3. So this will cancel out. This will now be 300 instead and this will now be 1200 instead so it's n 300 minus n over 1200 which is what's required so for part c we're told that the rate of growth is a maximum after t months and therefore we need to find the value of t now be careful with this question because the moment that you read maximum you might be thinking it's talking about the maximum of n here and we've talked about how to do this before we find dn over dt and then we equal this to zero and find the maximum from here but this isn't what the question is asking the question is not asking about the maximum of n it's asking about the maximum of the rate of growth which is dn over dt so what this question is actually saying is that dn over dt is at its maximum at t months it's not talking about n up here and in part b we found that um, dn over dt can be written like this here so therefore what this part is saying is that n 300 minus n over 1200 is at its maximum at t months so we need to find this value of t here now the big issue is that this expression here is not made up of the variable t here it's made up of the variable n such that we can't really find the t value here for where this is at its maximum as it's made up of n but what we can do is we can find the value of n for which this is at its maximum as it's made up of n and this is actually really easy to do because if we look at this expression here well firstly so we're trying to find the value of n for which this is at its maximum and what you can actually do is you can actually ignore this 1200 bit uh, down here and get rid of it the reason is because it's, is this kind of dividing by 1200 affects all the values the same such as the value of n for which this maximum occurs will be the same for this expression and this expression here this part is irrelevant and if we expand the brackets here we get 300 n minus n squared and this here is actually a quadratic where the maximum is going to be the turning point here and the value of n for which this maximum occurs is going to be sort of the x value um, here but the x of, um, axis is actually n in this particular case and we can find this easily with a quadratic you might have to do some revision here because it might be a while that you covered this of how we find the turning point um, for a quadratic um, I recommend going back to the video I made in year one chapter two on um, quadratic graphs part one but the way that you can do it you can do it by um, finding the midpoint of the roots but the easiest way to do it in my opinion is by completing the square so firstly we need to factorize out kind of the minus one from this so that this is now um, just n like this here and then in order to complete the square we half this number here so it's now n minus 150 and then this is to the power of 2 and then we have to minus whatever this number is squared here and then we need to do this multiplied by this such as we get this in the completed square format here and when you complete the square this is again we probably have to do some revision back to year one the turning point when you have the quadratic in this form here is minus p q so therefore the turning point here is going to be minus p q so it's going to be minus minus 150 
So 150 and then 22500. Now this part here is irrelevant. This is the maximum of um, this uh, expression here. But what we're interested in is the n value for which this maximum occurs, which is 150. So therefore, the maximum of dn over dt is when n is equal to 150. So you might be thinking at this point, okay, so we found the value of n when dn over dt is at its maximum, but we need to find the value of t when dn over dt is at its maximum. But the reason that this is really useful to us is we can use this equation up here and just plug in n as 150 and then just rearrange in order to find this value of t when dn over dt is at its maximum. So we can just do that. So we can move this 900 numerator onto the other side here. So it's 900 divided by 150 which will be 6 and then what we can do is we can move the 3 onto the other side so it becomes this and then divide both sides by 7 so it becomes e to the power of minus 0.25t is equal to 3 over 7 then take the natural log of both sides like this and then divide both sides by minus 0.25 to get that t is equal to minus 4 times the natural log of 3 over 7 now as t is in months it's not really that um, kind of neat or tidy to leave it in this form here so if you plug this into your calculator you get that t is equal to about 3.4 months so this is the value of t when dn over dt is at its maximum and then for part d we're told that the maximum number of mice on the island is p and therefore we just need to find the value of p and this is the thing that i was talking about before because the maximum number of mice is going to be the biggest value of n and the way that we find the biggest value of n is just differentiate it to dn over dt set it to zero and then find the value of n because this will be the maximum will be at a stationary point when the derivative is zero and we have quite nicely got a dn over dt already in terms of n so dn over dt just equal this to zero like we've done here and then rearrange this in order to find n so just multiply both sides by 1200 to get it into this form here so that that means that n can either be equal to 0 or 300 minus n can be equal to 0 and as n can't be equal to 0 because we're talking about the maximum number of mice and the maximum number of mice is not going to be 0 therefore we're interested in the solution for 300 minus n is equal to 0 so therefore n is equal to 300 so the maximum number of mice on the island p is 300.